election until September, maybe. That's maybe, right? Because we, we still are in an unprecedented time. We don't know what the future will hold, right? Um, you know, yes, it's, it's warmer weather, things are getting warmer, but we know with viruses, and it, we can even study it from the past when this happened 100 years ago, there's um, waves of this, right? So once it starts getting colder, you know, people are, ex are expecting that the cases will go up, right? Yep. So um, there's a talk that maybe, you know, people won't be in the office until 2021. Mm -hmm. So forget even the summer or the or the fall. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for an industry, right? An industry, especially that is dependent on productions happening and everything like that. That means that a lot of things are going to happen in terms of development. So right now, this is a good time to be a writer, mm -hmm. a director, a producer, especially a writer. A lot of these companies are looking for scripts. They have the time now, right? They're not in the office. Yeah. They're not, they're not, um, their productions aren't happening. So they're looking for scripts. They are looking for writers. They, they want to read as much as they can. And um, I would say to people here, it's important at this time, if you're a writer uh, and maybe there's scripts or ideas that you've always wanted to do and you haven't been able to do, use this time to, to brush up on your scripts and, and to go back and revisit your scripts and also to do some research and see the companies that will take Unsolicited, unsolicited submissions because people are looking for writers. I hear that all the time when I'm on the phone with the studios and with the production companies. And, um, you know, and because of that, I am very busy. There is so much going on with development. You know, I, I during COVID, I was able to package a film. Uh, it's a horror comedy that stars Val Kilmer, Melon Ackerman, and we're going to the Cannes virtual market with it. Um, and, uh, you know, basically it, it definitely, it, 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 it happened and it, it, you know, it didn't, COVID didn't stop it. The pandemic didn't start, stop it. We're still packaging and getting things together. The only thing that we're not doing is production, right? right. But in the minds of a lot of these studios and, and production companies, this is the time now to get the packages together so that whenever we do get the green light, whether it's we get a, a vaccine or everybody can test themselves and you know we have a better way to do it once we start production there will be back to back things that we can do it's not like oh what do we do now no no that's why production is uh, development is ramping up right now they want to have as much things as possible set up so that when we can do production we can just go ahead and do it yes great so um and, and this is what I have been hearing is that, you know, this is definitely a time for development. So um, if uh, one, one of the things that I was um, talking to you about was um, the issue of log lines. And I'm always, um, you know, working with my clients on their log lines. Um, when you first hear a log line or see or read a log line, um, one of the things that I think filmmakers have difficulty understanding is that a trained eye can really understand what that log line is all about. And, I, and I'm, don't, I'm not quite sure what my question is, but why is it that you as a literary agent can look at a log line and know if there is something there that you are interested in pursuing further? Um, yeah, that's what I you know, I, it, I, overall, a, a log line really, really helps. I mean, especially if you're uh, applying to things, like if you're applying to fellowships and, and um, also to a lot of these writing programs that I recommend that people apply to, like all of these studios, whether it's Sony or Warner Brothers, they all have these writing programs that I think it's really important to apply to because these are are gatekeepers. You get into these programs and you have now, you have tools, you have mentors, you have people who can help you get to that next level. I, there are so many studios and companies um, that when they read writers that they don't know, one of the first things they ask is, oh, did, were they part of a, a writing program at, at a studio or, or, you know, mm -hmm. or did they, were, were they part of a screenwriting contest? Like they are open to new writers, but they always ask that question. Right, because they want some uh, credibility uh, for the writer. So exactly, yeah. And in, yeah. in order to differentiate yourself from um, everybody, 
Yeah. And, yeah. but getting back to log lines, I'm so sorry. I went off. That was a good detour. <laughs> that was an excellent detour. <laughs> sorry about that. Sometimes I do that. You can feel that free to get back on track if I ever do that. <laughs> but for log lines, they are, yes, they are. It's great to be able to, to see something and to get an idea of what the, um, right what the story is about right um in in that sentence right is it something that would make me want to read further um but you know I don't know if it's because I started off as a writer myself uh -huh. um and and I'm still a filmmaker I'm a producer and I'm, I still do that I even with the log line being what it is I still like to take a chance and read a script mm -hmm. because sometimes I found that maybe people aren't the best with a log line, but that doesn't mean that the script isn't great. Yeah. And my job as a lit agent is to find the best script to work on, whether that means that I'm going to now represent that writer, or if that means that I'm going to package that script and try to get that script made under the indie film division. So basically at Buckwald, there's two divisions that I that I work under and that I'm helping to develop. I work under the MP Lit division and we represent writers, directors, and producers. And our goal is to, you know, get them film jobs um, in, in the studio system. So with the studios or with the production companies. And then under the indie film division, which I'm also helping to develop, uh, basically we work with filmmakers and we try to help them get their film made. Does that, it can mean a variety of things. It could mean that maybe we put Buckwald talent into their film to help with the package, or it could mean that maybe we do some sales consulting on the film. Maybe it help, we help with financing, um, or, or we just do overall packaging where we help with a variety of things to just get the project on its way. So this Val Kilmer, Mellon Ackerman horror comedy that we did, we packaged it because we worked on the financing, we did sales consulting, and then we also, um, we also uh, put in some Buckwell talent, um, you know, to support Val Kilmer and Mellon Ackerman and all of that stuff. So, you know, we also have some other things that are in the works. Uh, we do we, w we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves in the indie film division. So we have the genre, we'll do the genre stuff. So we'll do like the horror and all that stuff, um, comedy or something like that. But then we'll also do the prestige films. We'll do the films that we feel could be the next Sundance premiere, the next con premiere and all that stuff. So we, you know, we definitely don't want to pigeon ourselves into only doing genre. We want to do prestige movies too um, and, and all that stuff. So, so yeah, so, you know, I think that, you know, if, if I get a log line and it's maybe it's not the best and it's not the most enticing, at least for me, it's, it, it's not going to stop me from at least checking out the material. Uh, because as a lit agent, I just feel that, and maybe some other lit agents will disagree and they'll be like, no, it's all about this or that. But I just feel like I, it's important for me to give writers a chance mm -hmm. and not condemn them because maybe their log line isn't the most whatever, like, uh, to me, a log line doesn't sum up your your writing skill. Yes, at I least to me. True. I, I when I used to uh, run a cinema, I used to run a cinema in uh, in Miami Beach. Amazing. Yes, it was great, and um, we had one screen, and uh, you know we showed uh, a lot of independent films, a lot of foreign films, um, but we specialized also in uh, LGBT films and. Um, so anyway, uh, but there was a moment in my time there where one day I was looking at a poster and I suddenly had this realization that I knew how, meant, how well that film was gonna do, financially speaking, by looking at the poster. And mm. I, I was really horrified. I thought, oh my God, I've turned into this. <laughs> What happened? And, and it took me years to get to the point of understanding, no, I had finally been able to understand marketing as well as writing and filmmaking. Exactly. And that those two things always go together when yep. you the film. Yep, they do. So to me, the log line is really um, about marketing. And I understand what you're saying that, yeah, it's it's not fair really to expect filmmakers to be 
really good marketers as well as right good writers yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but but you know but it's a reality right like it, right. it's definitely like it's something that we do have to uh you know we do have to face because you know you will be sending these log lines to different things whether you're applying for a writing program with a studio or whether you're applying for a writing competition or whether you're applying for a fellowship or, or grant or anything like that, you're gonna need that log line. That's yes. one of the first things that's gonna be on an application Absolutely. for anything, you know? So it is important, <laughs> but I, I definitely, my, myself, I definitely don't try to um, pigeonhole, I guess, myself with, with just th certain things. And, and I think it's definitely part of like, um, I, I just feel it's important if I can, to try to give someone a chance. And, 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 and so I tend to look at things that way because I, I just feel like if, if I limited myself to things, because there are so many people when I started sales and distribution that were like, you're a producer, why are you doing this? Like I was actually very, I was told yes. not to do it. Yes. And I'm so glad I didn't listen. I'm so glad I didn't listen and I did it because I thought to myself, well, let me just try this. If it's not, um, if it's not something that I end up wanting to do, at least I've learned something, right? I've right. learned something that will be beneficial to any film I work on. And I ended up actually staying in it and still continuing to do it and even starting my own company based off of that, my own sales and distribution consulting company. So I definitely feel like I definitely don't try to just say what everything has to be one way I try to just be as open as possible because I feel like I've I've encountered really really great things where I've learned great things from being open but unfortunately as we know this industry isn't always like that so <laughs> yeah, that's right that's right open is not necessary. so yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you also about because you really are a specialist in uh, diversity and that's like, I just realized that's a really weird thing <laughs> That, well. is, that is super weird to say um, because <laughs> I, I you know, uh, we we live in a diverse world and that's just the way it is. It's like right. right. So, but um, could you talk a little bit about how that your specialization in that arena is um, impacting the way that you look at projects, and then also uh, what's new in Hollywood around diversity? Yeah, no, these are all great questions, Joanne. Thank you so much. Um, so I, um, you know, I think with, with diversity, you know, being a woman of color, I do feel that, um, you know, okay, so when I, I'll put into perspective, when I started out, there was no Grey's Anatomy there was no Shonda Rhimes, there was no Issa Rae, there was no Mindy Kaling. Right. You know, I always felt like I was looking for mentors or people who were doing things that, that look like me. And, uh, you know, it, even, even, even when I was in school, when I, when I went undergrad to Carnegie Mellon and I was doing theater, or when I was in graduate school for film at Columbia, I was just always trying to look for mentors, period. And there really uh, just didn't seem to be a lot of people that look like me that were doing things at the time. And I just even remember growing up because I, I started doing this as a young age because I was, you know, singing, I was writing, I was acting. So I've, I've been doing this for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just remember on TV not really seeing a lot of people that look like me. And so that's why I think in, even in high school, I was just like, yeah, you know, I mean, I think there was Oprah and Whoopi and those were maybe the, you know, people that I would see that, that, you know, look like me and all that stuff. And then later on, it, it got a little better with maybe Halle Berry or J-Lo or Lucy Liu and all that stuff. But it still, there wasn't a lot, especially behind the scenes. And I don't know if you guys remember, but a few years ago, Chris Rock had this article. I don't know if it was in Variety or Hollywood Reporter, where he was like, I don't see people behind the scenes that look like me. And he was talking about agents and... and, uh -huh. and all sorts of yeah. stuff. It's a very interesting article. I'll see if I can find it and send oh, it, to, you and send it yes. to the group. Mm -hmm. But it just, it was a good point because in everything I've done, whether it's sales and distribution, um, you know, even being at UTA, there just wasn't a lot of people that looked like me there. And so I think a lot of it was, I was always trying to find mentors. And I, and I did find mentors. Like when I first started working, 
um, you know, this, this Caucasian man who was absolutely lovely Academy Award winner, um, you know, uh, I helped him with film development and all that stuff. And he's still a mentor and a friend to this day. And I'm so grateful for that. Mm. But I think that if you don't see um, a lot of you reflected in the industry, um, you know, and then maybe certain experiences happen, you're just like, yeah, diversity is important. There's such a thing as unconscious bias, right? Um, you know, which is, I think is very key. <laughs> it's key. It's just, I think it's key because there's a lot of people I think that think that they're open-minded and they don't think that they'd ever treat someone differently just mm -hmm. because of this and that, but maybe because of gender, because of whatever they do and they're not, thinking about it. They're not like, you know, it's not something, they don't think that they'd ever be that person. So I, I felt like, you know, with everything that happened with Time's Up and Me Too, I was seeing a lot of things that I never thought I would see. Right. Um, and this is coming from someone who started before all of that, you know, like there wasn't what we have now. And even with what we have now, there's still a lot of work that we have to do. Like where I am right now, I'm still the only female agent in the office. Oh. Um, you know, like where, where I was before, I, I wasn't at that age, the previous agency a long time, but I was still on the leadership team for their diversity stuff because there wasn't a lot of people that looked like me. So by default, like it was like, okay, all right, I'll step up, even though I hadn't been at the, at the agency for a while. And then when I was working in sales and distribution, where I was for several years, I was the only woman uh, and only person of color for years. So it's definitely the kind of thing where I'm just like, you know, I think there's a uh, room for everybody, right? There's, there's, a, there's room for everybody. We don't have to exclude anybody, whether you're white, black, purple, blue, you know, there is room for everybody. And I think that we just have to be conscious of trying to open these doors because a lot of times um, without even realizing it, it can be a boys club and it can be really tough for someone else, you know, um, to kind of get into that club, you know? And so I think that there just needs to be awareness. Um, how can we diversify and all that stuff? And, and just make efforts to do it, that's all. Just make yeah. efforts to do it, just so that everyone has a seat at the table. We're not excluding anybody, no one's excluded. We're just trying to bring up and diversify as much as possible, so I'm all for that. And I do feel that, you know, I feel like the industry is like, okay, we have a lot of catching up to do. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> we have a lot of catching up to do. And I'm seeing that when I talk to the studios and companies, a lot of them are very all for diversity um, in all of its forms. So, you know, especially, uh, you know, I hear a lot about them wanting female directors, more female directors and, and um, you know, definitely, especially in TV. Wow, TV, they are definitely, their writer's room, they want to be as diverse as possible, mm -hmm. um, is what I'm finding. So it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, if you are, you know, a person of color, a woman, TV is just really opening up so many opportunities um, oh, for diversity. Interesting. Yeah. They're, they're, they're championing it, like, very much very, very much. So that's at least what I'm finding and what my colleagues in the TV division are finding. They uh -huh. want to read more from women and people of color and LGBT and, and every, you know, a lot of groups that maybe weren't able to have these opportunities in the past. They're really trying to, to open up the doors. So that, that's what I'm finding at least. Um, that's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. It's I definitely great. Yeah. I'm, I'm encouraged by it. And, and like I said, there's room for everybody. There's room for everybody. So, you know, no need to exclude anybody. We can definitely, uh, uh, you know, make strides to just be as inclusive as possible. Yes, yes. So um, are you seeing um, more, no, what is it? The, the, it's something about diversity that I want to ask. It's about, um, are you seeing more uh, variety of stories are there any stories that are still being left out? That's a great question. One, I get this from everybody. They yeah. want to see stories that they've never seen before. Uh -huh. They want to see from different point of views that they've never seen before. There was a, you know, a big exec at, at one of these big studios that was just like, I, I, want, I want that story from that point of view that we don't often get to see. Yeah. And what does that mean? What don't we often get to see? Um, you know, it would be great to, you know, maybe have more female superheroes, maybe have more, you know, um, 
uh, more, more comedies, diverse comedies and all this stuff. They just want point of views, even, you know, uh, stories of people from other countries. I mean, look at Parasite. Yes. And the success that Parasite is. Like, they just want stories that they haven't seen, different point of views. That is what I'm getting from everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And, you know, and, and if you're dealing with the studio, they want, the, they want franchise potential. They want stories that have franchise potential. They want stories that are four quadrant, meaning that, like, it's for all ages, families, they can all enjoy. Like, everybody is trying to do the next Marvel kind of setup where it's like for everybody, everybody can watch it and all that stuff. And Marvel, if you've noticed in recent years, have really ramped it up with diversity, right? Yes. So everybody's trying to follow that, that model. Yeah, it, but it's really interesting to see also which countries, uh, I mean, sorry, which companies are leading the charge in diversity. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Marvel really seems to be one of them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, you know, and, and you can, you can definitely tell, like, I, you know, it's definitely the kind of thing where um, if you have a unique voice, if you have a story that hasn't been seen before, that's what a lot of people are looking for. Now, the studios are more specific about, they want franchise potential, they want four quadrant. Um, I would say the production companies are definitely more about, um, uh, you know, we just want a genre, we want a, a good genre film. So that could be like a horror, comedy, sci-fi, fantasy, um, you know, type, a, a good film, right? Um, that's in one of those genres. Um, I think for like the prestige films that are the dramas, mm -hmm. um, you'd have to go to specific companies for that. Specific companies want the, those films. But a lot of people in general are just looking for a good genre film. Horror, comedy, sci-fi, fantasy, action. Um, yeah. yeah, and and also I think um, to have diversity in those genres yes. is, is really interesting. Yeah, I was talking to a financier, uh -huh. um, they're pretty well known, and they were like, okay, they were like, I don't want the next 12 years a slave. They were like, we've done that, and it did very well. They were like, okay, let's take it to the next level. Let's have gravity, but the lead be a woman of color. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. So let's pair genre with a lead that we don't normally get to see. Yeah. You know, type of thing. So they're, so they're, they're definitely trying to think outside the, the box. Like, you know, another company that does financing, they were like, yeah, we want the next Love, Simon, or we want the next to all the boys I've loved. Right. You know, we want those unique voices in the rom-com or in the genre, in the other genre that we don't get to see normally. Right. Right. That's really great. And um, this is something that I'm personally, this is so great because I get to ask all these questions. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so one of the things that I heard this, uh, you know, where I heard this, I went to a, um, a conference about uh, transgen the transgender community and entertainment. It was, mm. it was really great. And um, one of the things, one of the conversations that has really stuck with me from that is the issue of authenticity. And I feel as though, in addition to Me Too and Time's Up, that we've also seen um, a big shift around the issue of authenticity. So a few years ago, uh, one of my clients and I went to see, because he's an Academy voter, and we went to see, is it, was it Ghost, uh, what's the Scarlett Johansson big? Oh, Ghost in the Shell? Ghost in the Shell. I wanted to say <laughs> Ghost in the Shell, and I'm like, no, 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 that's a small indie movie from years ago. <laughs> Ghost in the Shell. And I remember, and we went, and it was so exciting, and we were at the, um, uh, oh, what that, the George Lucas theater here in town or it was all very exciting and we go and see this movie and it was terrible <laughs> it was just terrible and of course that happens you know but yeah. um but then there was so much talk about the fact that this was a beloved story and it was a yeah. beloved uh asian or asian american no asian character really? and it had been given to scarlett johansson and and the issue of authenticity 
feels to me to be incredibly central? Oh, that's such a good question, Joanne. Like, thank you for bringing that up. Okay, so there's the, oh boy, yes, it is, okay. So I, um, I was talking to this production company and it's run by this Academy Award winning actor, beloved, iconic, well-known, and they're, they're lovely. They're absolutely a lovely group of people and they're doing some wonderful, important projects. And um, their, their thing is that they're all about inspirational. Yes, they want commercial things that people will go to the theater for, but they want like inspirational stuff, like Remember the Titans or, mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, they, they want that kind of inspirational. Right. And that stuff also appeals to studios, right? Because it's, it's yes. uh, for everybody and all that stuff. But this is actually a production company uh, by an Academy Award winning actor. And they have this film that I, I was like, if it's done well, it could be the next Pan's Labyrinth mm. or the next Beasts of No Nations. I read the script in one setting. I was like, this is amazing. I was like, who's this writer? I want to rep this writer who, you know, and all that stuff. And it's, it's set in Africa. Uh-huh. And I was just like, this, this could be the next Pan's Labyrinth, just set in Africa. So I was like, you know, and they were like, oh, well, the writer, um, you know, is a, um, is a Caucasian man. And, and he wrote this because he came from a, a place of pain. There was something, you know, that was going on in his, in his personal life. And I was like, no, I was like, it's devastating. And I could tell because the writing was amazing. Right. It, it, the story was great. Now, there were some things that, you know, because my family's from Africa, I was able to say, okay, maybe these names wouldn't have been used. Maybe right. this, you know, and I was also just able to say, hey, you know, I think a, a, a lot of things that, some things that we, that, you know, we, we say about, I guess, our portrayal in Western cinema is that there's always this suffering. Mm. We, you, there's never like a diverse Africa. <laughs> because not just like America, America isn't all about mass shootings. Right. Africa isn't all about, you know, uh, I guess what, what, what are, what are stereotypes that people see like starving? Right. You know, that's not all of Africa, you know, uh, uh, war is not all of Africa. Just like you wouldn't say one country is, is just all of this. And I, and I just feel like when I come across international scripts in general, I think it's just important to try to portray the diversity within that nation as much as possible, not mm -hmm. to show them as one thing, right? Because mm -hmm. no human being, no country is one thing, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's like how we have to look at it. And so I said, you know, it's a great story. I was crying at the end. The mm -hmm. only thing I would say is that we not make it just about terrorism. Mm -hmm. Because these, the, the people that are part of it, before they, before they got into this lifestyle, they were they were going to school. They had jobs. They had families that they love. They had all of you know all of this stuff. So I just thought like, can we have scenes that show their life before um, you know terrorism was put into play? Just so that again, we're not feeding into the stereotypes that you know Africans there's only this going on and that going on. Um, you know, those were my notes, and I was just like, you know, the writer did a great job. If you other than getting certain names wrong, maybe, I would just say I wouldn't have thought that they weren't African, right? Uh-huh. And I was just like, they're a good writer, and, and that's wonderful. But I was like, I think it's important with what's going on right now that at least the director and the cast, that we make sure that they are from that country, Right. Because we don't want for people to be like, why are you telling our stories, but you're not including the people who, whose stories we're trying to tell as part of the filmmaking. Right. I think that, that, I think that it is important. And, and I think it also goes to being inclusive, right? If yeah. we're going to tell stories about people from other countries, I think it is important to include the people who are actually from those countries. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I feel as though the day is over when we can have Scarlett Johansson playing a, a, a seminal Asian character. Yeah. I think the days are gone. Yeah. And, and, I I'm, think it and I'm glad for it because authenticity yeah. makes everything better. It does. And also it's, it's also the fact that we have to realize that we have a history of doing this, right? We have a history in the entertainment industry of 
you know, there hasn't been a lot of opportunities for, uh, you know, minorities to get to play these roles or to even get certain stories on screen, right? It's only in recent times that we're, we're more woke and we're, we're, we're making an effort to do this, but there's still a lot of work to be done, right? Yeah. So it's really important that if we have a history of not, um, you know, having people tell their stories that we make an effort to include them in the storytelling, you know? Yes. I, I think that that is important. And, and, you know, and it just goes to, you know, I think if this story that could be the next Pan's Labyrinth for, uh, if I think if it was done 20 years ago, I think that they would have just done it and not, but the fact that they're thinking about that, that yeah. that's, a, that's a step in the right direction, right? Yeah. Like, what was that story where they wanted to do the Harriet Tubman movie and they wanted Julia Roberts to star in it? <laughs> did you hear that story? No, well, I did not, but... Yep. Yes, I kid you not, to the point where even Viola Davis was like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> But that's what happens, though. It, that, yeah. that is what happens, though. Like, yeah. I'm not surprised. Like, yeah. sometimes there are certain people who they're just not really think, getting the big picture. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, and to give Julia Roberts credit, she's <laughs> wonderful. I'm sure if they had actually approached her, she would have been like, no way. I don't think Are so. you kidding me? <laughs> you know, because Julia, you know, Julia Roberts has common sense and she's great. Yes. I think, you know, I doubt she would have taken on the role of Harriet Tubman, but, but, <laughs> was it, but it was coming from these, the, the, the decision makers. Yes. Yes. This was, this was coming from, so that's why diversity is important too, because if you have people, if you have an inclusive table in the, de, in the decision-making, things like that won't come about. It didn't happen. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, so <laughs> I, I'm, I really have to apologize because you told me and I forgot to tell everybody that you were going to have to leave at, um, at the quarter to the hour. So we only have five minutes left. And so I know that people are eager to ask questions and I, I apologize. No, it's fine. No, no problem. I've left it a bit late. But so if anybody has a question and I'm going to be a little bit uh, picky about this. But um, it's always harder in a room. It's always harder for women to speak up. And I'd actually like to ask if there are any women who have a question that they would like to ask Sola. I would. Hi, Go Sola. Go ahead. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you, considering. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd like to ask, um, I have my notes here. I'm a producer and a director from the Bay Area. Nice. And um, worked on a lot of different projects. My last project was Big Frida series on Fuse. Oh, wonderful. And um, I wanted to know, like I'm, as a producer, you know, you're always working on multiple projects. I just want to know, are you guys looking to represent talent meaning producer director and not just soliciting actual projects yes that's a really great uh question we um represent uh uh i'm gina brashier mm -hmm. uh she who uh it's what is it i heart abiola wait is that what it's called on cbs the um the 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 show abby shala that show um, and is basically, she is a, you know, producer, creator and all that stuff. So we, yes, there, there you go. Yeah. Abby Shola. The, yes. Thank you, uh, Tony. So, <laughs> so basically, yeah, we, we do represent, um, we represent writers, directors, and producers. And, um, we work closely, like I work in MP Lit and Indie Film, but I work closely with the TV division, mm -hmm. uh, especially because, uh, a lot of the people we represent um, go back and forth between film and TV. Okay. So for example, I have a client that I signed recently mm -hmm. whose first feature film, it was a romantic comedy uh, starring DeWanda Wise of She's Gotta Have It, a uh, Spike Lee show on Netflix. It premiered at, at Sundance, his first feature film. Now he is writing and developing a show for HBO and Issa Rae and Three Arts. So, and then at the same time, we're also now uh, working on getting his second feature done too. So he's doing TV and film and he's a producer, director and writer. And what would the submission process be 
to be considered for a representation or to meet, you know, to see the work? Um, for that, um, definitely, if you could give that to Joanne, okay. that would be great. I would love to see your work. Thank you. I would love to see I would see love to submit it. <laughs> yes, please. I appreciate please. that. Joanne, Thank please, I would love to, um, uh, and I'm sorry, what's, what's your I'm name? Renee. Okay. <laughs> Renee, okay, Renee, definitely. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Joanne about you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Renee. One last question. Who's uh, my, name is, my name is Rachel Benjamin. Hi, Hi. Rachel. Nice to How meet are you. you. Thank you so much for doing this. This is so exciting. I'm also, I want to piggy, piggyback on what Renee said. I am also a writer director. Um, I'm working on my first feature film. Nice. And um, I guess, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and I, I was really, I, I missed the last um, Zoom meeting and I was so excited to know that you were doing another one. So thank you so much for doing this. No problem. Um, but I want to also piggyback on that. Um, I would like to submit my work to you um, to be considered because I am looking for representation as well. Can you tell us about your film, Rachel? Sure. It's um, the feature film I'm working on is called According to Diana. Um, it's, I like the it's, title. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is it, Sola. You see what happens? Yes. It's like, yeah, great title. I can see the poster. <laughs> yeah, <go ahead. laughs> okay. So it's, it's um, According to Diana, it's loosely based on my life when I first moved to Miami. I live in Miami, Florida. So yeah. it's loosely based on um, when I first moved to Miami. Nice. Um, and it's about the growing pains of starting a new life um, in a new city. That's and where did you come from? So, and where did you move from? Excuse me? Where did you move from? Um, Chicago. Okay, okay, great, great. Um, yeah, so it's about the growing pains of moving from one city to the next and being an artist and the growing pains of uh, um, trying to... Um, get your bearings and then your conservative family not really getting it <laughs> wow and, and so what, it sounds amazing what genre is this it's a comedy comedy slash drama okay all right great okay okay wonderful wonderful well okay so you said you're working on it do you have I, I have a script ready and i have a teaser but um i definitely would love to submit something to you Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's great. I, uh, you know, I would love to read it. Uh, definitely. Uh, Joanne, uh, will help with that. So if you could, um, uh, send it to Joanne and then, and then uh, yeah, I would love to read it. Like it sounds, it sounds right. great. You know, I love dramedy. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. No problem. It's a new thing. Um, so, uh, I'm just uh, watching the time for you. So I can give you a few more minutes before my next call so we can finish. Right. This I, see I have a question. Right. Oh, Kip. All right, Kip, let's have you first and then Deborah. Uh, I just um, wanted your take on is there a market for LGBT themed films these days? I have a feature that I wrote. Yeah, I mean, there is. There definitely is. And, I, I, you know, and again, a lot of people are looking for that genre film. So, if you have like, um, you know, if you have diversity in any form, um, especially if it could be something like a, like a Love, Simon, or To All the Boys I've Loved, or something like that, they're, they're looking for things like that, a lot of the companies. If it's more of a drama, then that's definitely something that's more for the prestige companies who are looking for the next Sundance or something like that. But yes, there definitely is a market, uh, you know, as it, they're looking for diverse voices in all of its forms, you know? So definitely I would say yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I keep hearing a lot that the, you know, uh, companies are looking for more LGBT writers um, in general on the TV front and on the film front too. So, you know, again, it, it's, it's just overall a great, great time to to have a you know writing sample um you know that reflects um diversity just period overall yeah is that something that you would be willing to look at and what and what's the genre of this is is this a, this is a feature right Wait, yeah it's a feature hold on, hold it's on, a kip. historical hold on, kip. Drama set hold on, in san kip. francisco right. hold on kip can you hear me yes yeah so I wanted to say, it's not enough to say about a film, it's an LGBT film. Okay. 
just just doing a little coaching in here. All right. Okay. That's not enough, right? Right, right. Okay, right. so what's the log line? The log line is um, young lesbian activist, cab driver turned civil rights lawyer takes on the legal establishment in San Francisco. Oh, wow. In the 80s, right? Wow. <laughs> right. So this is a, a period piece. It's a period piece, definitely. I, I, it sounds like a very, wow, it sounds like a very compelling drama. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, I well, sounds amazing. Like, are you, I guess you're looking for uh, an Academy Award here because that sounds like <laughs> <laughs> I would take one. Sure. That, that sounds wow. That sounds very compelling. Very compelling. Yeah. As you know, please. Um, you know, when you have, uh, it, it, I'm assuming you have the story ready. If you don't, uh, you know, if you have the script, please. Uh, you know, send to Joanne. Uh, I would love to read it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and also just something to say in general to people. Every all of these uh, stories I've been hearing sound wonderful. Uh, you know, so I do look forward to reading stuff. Please don't get mad at me if I don't get to it right away. I do have a list of things that I do have to read, and I don't. I'm not the kind of person who sends things to assistants. I like to read every single thing that comes across my way. I think that it's important that I'm reading stuff as an agent, and I'm not sending it off to the assistant or the coordinator. I need to be able to read this. So if it's taking me a bit of time, it's because I'm reading it. So, so please know that it will be read by me and not by somebody else. <laughs> and then also something to also say is that, you know, um, a lot of people, when you submit scripts, I would say, try to keep it to 90 pages. I had, there was a lot of people at Submarine at these agencies, um, uh, just in general, just wherever I, if you get a movie or a script that's over 90 pages, they are looking, they're like, they would be like, this better be the next, like, Citizen Kane, <laughs> or, this, or this better be the next Winter's Bone. Like, keep it to 90 pages if you can, if you can. If you can't, I'm one of those people who I'll still read it, because I have found a lot of great scripts that are over 90 pages. Like, I don't mind it. If it's a great script, and those extra pages are necessary, go for it. But there are a lot of people who, as soon as they get a script, they'll look at how long it is immediately. And if it's over 90 pages, they're expecting it to be spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The thing is, I think, Sola, you know, just to go back to where we started our conversation today, you're working 15 hour days. Yes. So the thing is, is that any, you know, anything where you would be able to get to read something is going to have to be it has to be you know really good and really worth it and yeah the first thing you know i remember years ago somebody came to me and said can you read my script and it was 400 pages oh my god <laughs> I said, okay, you know what i'll do i will read it if you can get it to 200 wow uh, because i knew that that if anybody who writes a 400 page script, aside from the fact that they're completely wacky, um, is, is missing. So, so I gave him like an incentive. He got it to 200 pages. And you know, that film got made and sold. Wow. It was a 200 page script when it got made and sold. Wow. Okay. It, it, you know, but it was just a way to start. But um, yeah, the first thing you do is you look at the what's the last page number and see how long this is going to take, right? <laughs> yes. And that goes for for scripts and for films. If you have a finished film and you're looking for sales and distribution, a lot of people are gonna be looking for that 90 minute mark. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, that, that's just the truth of the matter. So just, just to give you guys that heads exactly, up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I have a client right now who's in post on a feature and you know, he kept saying, I want it, you know, it's, it's gonna be two hours. And I'm like, you know, you can't sell it. I can't. No, yes, <laughs> Joanne. When I ran a cinema, you can't, I can't get my people into the cinema, watch the movie and out of the cinema in more than two minutes. Yeah. Two hours, I'm sorry. It's, it's just, you know, it doesn't work. It exactly. Doesn't work. Every, and that's, that's, that's the truth of it. Whether it's a script or a finished film that you're looking for sales or distribution, just stick to 90 pages. Or, or 90 minutes in terms of the film, you know? Yes, definitely, yes. definitely. That's something that any job that I've been, that has been the main thing. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you're Martin Scorsese, you can go over. So let's yeah. take 
for, her, for the last question. If you have time, Sola. Yeah, yeah, one more question, all good. Go ahead, Deborah. Nice yeah. to see you, Deborah. Yeah, Long nice time. Nice to see you too. Thank you so much for joining us. This is, this is absolutely fantastic. I just wanna echo what the others have said. I do have a completed script, it's set in Africa. And I really re re relate to what you were saying about uh, showing, getting away from those stereotypes. And this is what my script uh, has uh, available in it. So uh, if, uh, to echo the others, if, if you're open to looking at well, it. I tell, us, tell us your log line instead of- Okay, it's called, it's called A Delicate Balance. And it's actually loosely, in, it was inspired by my living and working in Africa. Wow. Uh, several years ago. And it's a romantic drama. Uh, it has to do with uh, with the Nigeria and the United States, so it's both and takes place in, in Nigeria and in the United States. But it's about a woman who uh, is working there. And she meets, uh, she falls in love, but she is um, she is conflicted because of her, the brother of the person who she loves is uh, com competing with her. She's over there uh, uh, being a consultant as a media consultant, and he has a media conglomerate, and so he does everything he, he can possibly do break down the relationships and so they, they're left struggling to uh to to live and grow within uh within those you know within that conflict wow wow so this sounds like it's a, a um uh is this more of a uh I, I definitely got the romance thing it sounds really interesting by the way is it more of a romantic comedy or just like a, a straight up drama or a dramedy it's close it's closer to uh drama and it, it could it could be a drama me because there's a lot of things in Africa that folks don't know about right, right. <laughs> that are that are kind of played out too. So it, it could actually when I first wrote it, I, I looked at it as a drama me, but it's more dramatic. Okay, but no, that it, sounds it can good. be drama me. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it sounds it sounds really really great, and I I love the international aspect of it. You know, especially you know we're we're definitely always looking. Um, for stories that that are you know open up our world view and and everything like that so I, I think that that's really really great yeah i would love to read it i would love to read it um definitely if you could uh you know please uh you know send it to joanne and then joanne will you know send that to me that that's absolutely wonderful sounds great sounds really really great love to, to read it wow before you run off i'd love to have karen pitch her log line because this is going to be good karen quick get you go log line in on mute. Yes. I'm remembering to turn myself off mute. So um, my story is about a young American, African-American woman who is betrayed by her best friend and dragged into the underworld in Paris. And she has to fight her way out of captivity, out of the sex trade industry. Oh, gosh, that's very compelling. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh. That's, that's oh, definitely. Thanks, I got the log line. <laughs> wow! Yeah, that, that's that's a that's a hooker. You know, I could I could even. That's a hooker? Did you just hooker. say that's a hooker? A hooker. You know what I meant. <laughs> You're like a, a a great a great hook. How about that? Oh boy, you guys can still tell I'm waking up. Oh boy. Um, no, this is this is really great. Oh my gosh, very compelling. Wow. Yeah, love to read it. I, um, I agree. Partly, Thank you. I partly wanted Karen because Karen is one of my clients. And so I wanted you to hear what happens when people have had the opportunity to really work on their log lines. It makes such a difference. And I could tell the genre from it. Exactly. This isn't going to be a, this isn't going to be a, a, I don't know, a romantic comedy or anything. No. That I, right away, this is going to be a serious, um, very compelling story. And all of, all, of this, all of the stories I've heard today sound great. They just all sound wonderful. So this is, this is really cool. This yeah. is really, really great. Yeah, I would lo love to read it. Love to read it. So, Thank you. Yeah, just like everyone, just like I am, I am definitely sending you all tons of positive vibes with everything that's going on in the industry. And just know that if you are writer, director, producer, this is your time right now all these companies are looking for projects. They're looking for things right now, even though we can't be on set to, to actually do production, they're looking for things. So I would say that, you know, write as much as you can and also try to get into, try to talk to as many um, uh, companies that, you know, are looking for scripts, uh, you know, go on IMDb pro, look at, you know, try to find companies and, you know, there are companies that you can just cold call 
and even if they if they can't take your script they'll right away tell you that they won't they can't take your script but there are some companies that will take things you know so i would just say definitely continue to to do that this is a good time for writers directors and producers overall Absolutely. Even, even in such a crazy time, this is a <laughs> this is well. The crazy time is is the time for being internal, and so that's perfect for writing. There you go. There you go. There you go. And I yeah, just wish everybody the best of luck and and all that stuff. And I love doing things like this, Joanne. Thank you for having me, and thank yeah, you guys thank for, you, for, uh, thank for just, you. yeah, this has been great. Pleasure, and um, thank you for taking the time because it's precious. Oh no, no, I'm happy to do this. I'm happy to do this. So. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank Be you. well. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. So um, thank you for, for letting me do that. Um, it's just a very, it, it, it's funny to talk about the issue of diversity and then not to act on it. So um, I chose to ask for women to speak up because um, it's just a, a, a very common thing. And you know, we were being given an opportunity. And so people who have more, a, a more ability to use their voices um, will, will take the opportunity. And that's just the way it is. That's just like, you know, but um, so, you know, thank you for doing that. And thank you for playing. And um, thank you, Karen, for um, giving your log line, because I think that, thank you. You know, you, you, when, when it's really been worked on, you hear the difference. You hear, you hear the difference immediately. It's like we heard every word. We know exactly what genre you were in. We know exactly where it is, what's going on. And, and there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, not that you always have to end. I'm, I'm, I'm very anti-rules, just so... <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, um, you don't have to have an ending in a long line. So just, but a beginning is good. <laughs> and how about um, just an ending? <laughs> not just an ending, but uh, so I really felt that was a great demonstration because I I know that if I have one of my clients pitch, it's going to land, you know, and it it, it makes all the difference because this is the kind of opportunity that is very, very, very unusual, you know, to be able to, to have somebody listening. So, um, and thanks everybody for behaving. Last week was a little bit wild, so, you know, <laughs> thank you for that. And then, and last week I didn't get to have the recording, so I was completely uh, uh, sad about that. And then today I realized it was my fault because I hadn't started the recording and I, I didn't, I missed the first five minutes or so. So um, before I go, I, I, well, hold on a minute. So I'm not going to go yet, but um, I'm just putting my calendar here in the, in the chat. Uh, for those of you who are not my clients yet, I would love to um, uh, speak to you if you're interested in um, becoming Karen. <laughs> and um, I would like to talk to you about possibly working together. And if you have any questions, I, I just want to sit here and kind of bathe in the, that was just so wonderful. And if you have questions, please go ahead. Um, can, um, Joanne? Yes. I, my name again is Rachel Benjamin. Um, so I came to this meeting through an email I received from you. Oh yeah. Um, so. Uh, I don't know you personally. Oh, but I did. Emails are just spreading around the world. <laughs> but I did get an email, either from you or your company, something to that yeah. effect. And so, can you tell me a little bit about what you do? Um, I am a business coach for filmmakers, and I um, I help filmmakers really navigate the uh, industry side of things, the business side of things. So what I find is that a lot of filmmakers um, are so focused on the craft, which is great. That's what they're supposed to be focused on, the writing, the quality and all of that. But then it's not getting translated into how it actually works in the world. And the, uh, the 
part of my experience, I think that really speaks to that is that I used to run a cinema. And uh, so I was at the other end. I was a filmmaker at the time, but I was at the other end. I was at the end where I spoke to distributors, I selected films for the cinema, sh showed films in the cinema and communicated with the press and did the marketing. You know, we did advertising and all of that. So that piece is almost not in the consciousness of filmmakers. And yet, why else are we making a film? So what I try to do is to put the creative side in the same mind as the exhibition, distribution, marketing side, so that the filmmaker is thinking about that whole piece. In fact, one of my clients who was on a minute ago, I don't know if he's still here, was telling me the other day because he just had a film go into distribution. And the, the sort of coming to the realization of what does marketing mean? Marketing means connecting with an audience. And I know that sounds like a, a silly, obvious thing to say, but for filmmakers, it's not always obvious. But I always say, if we can start at the beginning of the film thinking about how do I sell a ticket to my film? How do I get a butt in a seat to use industry insider language? Butts in seats, you know? So if the filmmaker can, can be thinking about that before they start the film, which is frankly the only way that it works in Hollywood. So as indie filmmakers, why can't we think like that? You know, how do I get people in the film? So Kip's question, you know, what about LGBT films? Well, isn't there an LGBT audience? Yeah. <laughs> so how do we connect the LGBT audience with this film? And, and start at the beginning thinking about that. Okay, thank you. Um, also, my next question is, do you have your, um, the, I, I guess the same email that I got for this Zoom, is that the same email I can send you my information to send to Seoul? Joanne at filmmakersuccess.com. And it's Sola, her name is Sola. Oh, Sola, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Joanne. Good to see you, Jonathan. How's it going in Trinidad? And and Kathy, how's it going in Trinidad? What's happening over there? It's get, it's getting better. Um, okay. Slowly, we are slowly reopening. Okay, okay, slowly. we're not there yet in San Francisco. So, I'm sorry, yeah. Joanne. Can you give me your email in one more time? I'll, I'll write it in the chat. Okay. So Joanne, I will just make an appointment through your calendar to talk about how to get this script to, to solo. Okay. How's that? okay, thank you. Uh, email would be better actually. Okay, all right, yeah. bye, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Rob, hey, uh, how you doing? How is the work coming along? Uh, you know, uh, so, no, there's a lot of creative stuff going on. I'm still working on the, you know, as you do, the plot and everything, characters and so on. Um, I did you know, have a question. Rob, before you ask yeah. your question, Kathy, who on my screen is sitting next to you. She, Kathy, she isn't on my screen. But <laughs> Kathy is in Trinidad. And it was just ah, yeah, this morning or yeah. yesterday, I mm -hmm. forwarded you her outline. Kathy, can you, can you unmute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, I forwarded it without reading. I had super busy day yesterday, and I, but I know that you're are you starting again your outline series. Well, yeah, I. Um... Oh, Kathy, Kathy. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me, Kathy? Oh no. Hi. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. We we aren't starting it again, but what I sent you was that we um after the success of the ten day movie outline challenge that we had. We took all of the guidance that we offered to writers and we put it into a workbook. So the email I sent you was about that workbook so that artists can do the outline challenge on their own time now with that workbook. Okay. All right. So Kathy, 
has put together this genius <laughs> thing. Uh -huh. It is a genius thing. And it's, uh, <laughs> you know, because one of the things I do with my clients is, uh -huh. you know, we start with the log line and then we get to the outline before we write the script. And I know that, again, it sounds really simple, but boy, does it make all the difference in the world. I was just looking, there's this um, Facebook group called something like uh, movie making memes or something. And there was this joke in there this morning about, um, uh, about making a film and halfway through realizing, but wait, I never read the script. So what's happening? And, um, you know, which is kind of an extreme <laughs> example. And yeah. I can assure you it's happening. But yeah. so having the log line, then having the outline and then the script, so anyway, Coffee put together this great thing. And so do you know when you're going to launch it again? When are you going to, are you um, going to launch another 10 days or, or are we on our yeah. own? No, we'll launch another 10 days, but I can't say when. But if yeah, you yeah, yeah. want to stay uh, updated, I can add you to our mailing list. You know, you can just okay. drop your email in the chat and I'll mm -hmm. add you to our mailing list. But you'll be one of the first to know once we do another challenge. Right, 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 right. It was just a really clever idea. You know, 10 days, one day you do this, you'd have prompts, you had a group, <laughs> and it was, it was just, yeah. oh, absolutely great. I'm, Bro, in, a, sorry, I'm in a little, <laughs> that it sounds a, cool. I'm in a little writer's group on Facebook that does a similar thing over a few weeks, but yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. does sound really cool. Yeah. So, I'm going up into 10 days. I like, you know, 10 days is yeah. plenty. I put my email in the chat. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And I had a pretty basic question, which yeah, was whether, whether um, if you have any idea how high budget Sola would consider for uh, reading scripts. She's not really, um, that's <laughs> not, I don't, that's not in her thing. In other words, not high budget. Mm -hmm. I, I was just wondering where, where the threshold might lie, her budget what? range that she would consider. Is that she was telling mm -hmm. us about a movie that they're packaging with Val Kilmer mm -hmm. that is a horror comedy. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I do, I just don't think that budgets is really part of her consideration is the way. Oh, sorry. Okay. I didn't understand what you meant. Yeah, no, I don't think it's part, part of what, what she's considering. Okay. Yeah. No, she said repeatedly the genres that they're interested yeah. in. Right? What are the genres she's interested in? Horror, thriller, comedy, drama, not bit so of sci-fi maybe. Not so much. No, no. She said, <laughs> she said fantasy, sci-fi, horror, yeah, yeah. thriller. Uh, did she say comedy? I don't know. I thought so, but I, I think I wrote them down last time. Um, uh, comedy. But, um, so uh, the um, she so so she was differentiating between the genre pieces and the prestige pieces, and um, they're interested in in all of them. But um, yeah, so I, I, just, I, I don't get the impression that she's talking about uh, finance. That's not yeah, right. Exactly what she's looking at. Yeah, I just assume that she seems to be interested in character based movies. And uh, if you were to pitch something like a Star Wars, so she funny, might just say, well, I, I don't know. They talk about, um, I heard her talk about superhero movies. A lot. Yes, that, that's, what, that's what prompted my question because yeah, I thought yeah. that she would not be interested in that level of. No, um, I don't think that's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah. All right, well, I have digested our lovely time together. Does, if anybody has a quick question, great. Otherwise, I'm going to go. So great to see you all and meet new people like Rachel in Miami. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Karen. Thank you. Miami. Bye, Joanne. Miami. Yeah, I'm in Miami, too. <laughs> Bye. 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 I just realized I needed to do something before I closed up. I heard Miami's opening up actually. Is that right? Is Miami, is Florida opening up? 
uh, yeah, there are parts of it. There are still kind of parts of Miami that are opening up. So Miami Dade, Miami City of Miami is going a little slower. So and Broward, so uh -huh. still not all levels. Yeah, we're yes. not opening up at all here in San Francisco. So. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully you won't get the spikes that are going to happen. So that's right. <laughs> Great to see you. Bye bye. Bye, Lowell. You were very quiet over there, but bye. Bye.